the previous videos, we have discussed about the process of determining the positions of the neutral axis from the top surface of the beam. It involved an extensive derivation of the resultant force of the concrete in the functions of x and also the derivations of the resultant force in the steel tendon also in the functions of x use the equations for the force equilibrium sigma fx equals to zero we are able to determine the locations of x this process is important so that we are able to compute the exact resultant force of the concrete. Assuming now we have already defined the locations of X and we are able to define the resultant force due to the concrete. Our next step is to check for the moment capacity. It is basically based on these equations the resistance of moment due to the pre-stressed member needs to be greater than the moment load acting on the member. With that, the divisions of MURD with MUED will be greater than 1.0. In the case that your resistance is less than the load you will need to add in additional reinforcement bars. In this case, the tendon itself alone is unable to generate sufficient bending resistance at the ultimate state. You will require the assistance of the non precessing steel bar to provide adequate resistance for the member at the ultimate limit state. Now let us look at the loads acting on the member first. It is basically obtained from the bending moment diagram. Or for a simply supported beam, the common formula WL square per 8 may be used. As for the resistance of the members for the moment, this formula is applied which is the summation of forces times the lever arm as graphically represented by the diagram here. The reference point for this moment resistance will be at the soffit of the beam. You will need to determine the centroid of the resultant force of the concrete as well as the positions of the tendons. There may be more than one tendon in the sections. You will need to use the principles of strength compatibility for you to determine the strength in the tendon. Be careful, you cannot use this strength directly to compute the resultant force in the tendon. If the tendon here is pre-stressing tendon, you will need to compute the total strength based on the equations given here. The epsilon B here are actually the strength due to the bending. You need to consider the pre-strength in the pre-stressing tendon. In the case that the non-pre-stressing reinforcement bar is provided, no pre-strength will be involved and the bending strength can be used directly to compute the resultant force. Now assuming that you have already determined the resultant force of the tendons and the reinforcement bar, identify their positions from their soffit of the beam. The moment capacity of the member will be equals to Fc times x lever arm, Fs2 times x lever arm, and Fs1 times x lever arm. 
you need to consider all the materials that can generate resultant force. This inclusive of the concrete in compression, tendon in tension, and non precessing steel bar in tension. Take note of the directions of the forces which will give you positive and negative moment. This moment will cancel out each other and the surplus of the moment resistance will be considered as the resistance of the member. You will need to make sure the resistance is greater than the load so that the member are able to sustain ultimate limit state. Since that we have mentions about the pre-stress tendon and also the non-pre-stressing reinforcement steel. These are their properties. The design stress in the tendon will be determined by this formula which is its characteristic yield strength divided by partial factor of safety. The characteristic yield strength is about 85% of its ultimate strength. This can be graphically represented by the diagram here. This is the characteristic strength of the pre-stressing tendon. The specified yield strength is about 85% of its ultimate strength. It is basically obtained from the offset gradient of 0.1% strength. And when come to the design stress, the specified yield strength is divided by partial factor of safety for the steel, which result in 87% of X specified yield strength. That gives a tolerance of more than probably 20% to the ultimate failure of the tendon. As for the typical reinforcing steel bar, the design yield strength will be determined by if FYK with its steel factor of safety. The factor of safety is 1.15. Based on the idealized stress strength curve, the ultimate strength of the reinforcing steel bar, it will be a factor of K times its design strength. This factor K can be referred to the table here which separate it into class A, B, and C. And the ultimate strength epsilon U care is also given here. We have already discussed in previous video, there are two models that we can adopt. We can assume the response post yielding of the member as an incline here which is limited by the epsilon UK. However, in terms of the design, you will only use up 90% of its epsilon UK. Alternatively, you may just design the non pre-stressing reinforcement bar based on the design U strength. With that, there is no limits of the maximum strength 